for this first example, I'm going to show you uh, some silver. I'm going to show you on the 12 by 12 mat, obviously. Now, I like to actually just run over my things with a little roller, one of these brayers, because my mats aren't always that sticky. This is quite an old mat. And just for security's sake, I'm going to put some washi tape down on my mat just to hold uh, the vinyl in place so that I don't have any problems with it slipping or slippage while I'm cutting it. So washi tape is wonderful for doing this and maybe just a piece along the top. I'm not worried about the bottom. So there we go. Um, so there's my piece of vinyl on the mat and now I'm going to load it. Loading is quite simple. Um, with the SDX mats you have to have the arrow pointing inwards but with the CM machines you can use either end of your mat so that's not important and so you just put the mat there and press the load mat button which is this one here and as you will see hopefully because I haven't used it for a long time this machine it will load and it pops out again to the required place now if you have odd bits of, of vinyl it might be an idea just to go into this area here and scan your mat okay so i'm just going to scan the mat and then i can make sure that i've got my actual design exactly where i want it So as you can see, it's actually quite difficult to see it there at the moment. So I can actually go to OK. So what I need to now do is actually edit everything. So I need to go into Edit. I need to go up to these three boxes here. Select it, everything, and then I'm going to select all. And as you'll see, you can't. it's difficult to see and press OK. Oh, no, that didn't select all. So edit, select all. Ah, that's got it all now. OK. And then I'm going to object edit and group everything. So it's processing it all. Patterns what cannot be weld. Oh, they, I've pressed the weld and not the group. Sorry. So it's this one here. So everything is now one piece. So I'm going to say OK. So now this is all grouped, I can actually move this down to somewhere in the middle of my piece of vinyl, wherever I'm happy with doing it, and press OK. I'm going to then cut, and I'm going to select cut, which you do on the CM machine. It's slightly different, obviously. And I need to change the settings because I want to do, I need to go into settings and do a half cut. So this is where it will be slightly different on your um CM machines, but you have to put it on a half cut pressure. So I'm going to put half cut on and OK. And then you have to choose your depth of cut on the CM machine, whereas this has actually got an automatic cut on it. And I'm not too fussed about saying what depth it should be with your CM machine because every CM machine is slightly set slightly different. I've had a couple of CM machines and neither of them cut exactly the same on the same settings. So you have to know your blade depth and just practice on some old vinyl until you're happy that you can cut through it. And also every piece of vinyl is slightly different as well. So um, check your, your vinyl before you cut it. That's all I can actually say. When you're happy that your settings are correct, then all you do need to do is press start. It will load your mat and it will cut, start cutting and it will tell you on your screen how long roughly it's going to take to cut. This is going to take three minutes so I shall come back when it's actually cut. Actually a little tip I'll give you while you're cutting, while this is cutting, is when you put your outline box around each item, make that the last thing you do because the last thing that you put on your machine, on your design, will be the last thing to cut. So it cuts in the order that you actually lay the design down. So this is cutting the actual 
um, filigree work around like the leaves around the circle. It will then cut the word John and then it will cut the square box around it. So that's what happens. So I shall come back in a second. Right, now you can see that it is cut and um, I need to get a little pair of tweezers or maybe even a scalpel will do. Oh no, pokey tool. Yeah, pokey tool. And um, this is where you can see the box, the, the reason for putting a little box around. So I can just poke under here and I can lift this up and hopefully everything else will stay as it where it was or possibly not. No, it's all going to come off in one piece in actual fact because it's very fine. This design is very fine. Actually, I think I've cut too deep. It's actually cut this too deep. Ah, I know what I did. I didn't, I didn't actually adjust my... Um, Ah, this is better. This is coming off as it should. This is better. Okay, and as you can see, that's coming off. Hopefully, leaving all that behind. So it makes weeding an awful lot easier if you can just have a little box around it because then it will leave everything where it should be. I hope my hands aren't in the way necessary you just need to give it a little help now, this is a very delicate design this probably far too delicate for what I'm doing in actual fact probably a very silly design to do but then I do things like that without thinking I like to be I never think properly because I'm blonde so there we go that's coming off nicely um, just the bit of the J on the John needs to be laid down and that little bit there so that has come up very nicely I didn't even really have to do any weeding with that bit um, let's pop that down where it should be there we go pop that down and there we go it's all that's just slightly it just needs to be lifted up and pushed down properly okay this bit um, here should come off in exactly the same way but I don't know why somehow or another it cut through rather deep on that 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 bit there so trying to do this in front of the camera so that you can see it's going to be difficult actually I'm going to put you on pause in a minute and come back and I have unloaded the mat and I'm just going to get a corner of this if I can to peel it off oh there we go if I turn that, that way around, hopefully you can see it better. And you should just be able to peel it back gently, but be very gentle, especially with something like this, because it's very fine what I've done here. So um, it's going to be a bit of a nightmare to get this off. Um, there we go. go. That way, just take it easy, a little bit at a time. Just tease it off. And then you should be fine. Always leave the very last bits, the little, the tiniest, thinnest bits until last, if you can. So this is going to have to come this way. So that's, oops, that has come up. That actually came off. So I haven't done a very good job with that. There we go. The rest are fine, but I've only got three because in actual fact, I made a complete boo-boo of that because I don't know why that cut deeper. But then I am human, so I might keep that little bit there anyway, because I can still use that little bit there, even though it's not a whole piece. So there's that. Whoops, up there. There's the other piece, and the only bit that I need to weed out of this is the O out of the centre of John. So in actual fact, whoops, it just flicked out. There it is. So I shall cut this on the roll feed next. And then I'll show you how I adhere it to the mug. By the way, always keep the bits of, of washi tape because they are very much reusable. Um, so they always come in handy. I've always got bits of washi tape um, stuck over my, sh my machine. So um, that's probably why I've never actually decorated. I keep meaning to de decorate the front of my machine, but I haven't done so. And this I was going to show you. Now I've taken that off the mat. Had this not been, had a square all the way around it, 
Imagine how difficult it would have been to peel this whole big piece of vinyl away from it. And again, how much vinyl you'd have wasted. Normally, if I wasn't demonstrating this, I would have put the the design up here in this corner. So I'd got all this left, but it was just to show you how to manipulate your mat. And that's the bit that obviously came out of there. Your raw feed for your CM SDX machine comes in a box like this. Oops, turn that so you can actually see it. And it comes in a couple of parts. in two parts okay one and two this is where you put the roll in so the first thing you have to do is obviously open up your machine drop the drop the lid down and this is probably the most complicated part move that out of the way for a second put that up there you have here a lever which you have to move you move that down and then you've got these two cogs here and basically what you're trying to do is hold the white one and twist the black one towards yourself and as you see that that will then move so you need to bring this back to this position here and then you lock that in position again before you can actually start there so now then you have this first piece and you sl slot that actually over this bar here in the middle so you're slotting this piece over this bar here okay and as you can see this moves slightly which is why I have written on it push to right to remind me to that it shouldn't be there it should be right the way over there because it might just slightly cut out of place if you don't do that so you pop that there Sorry, it's a bit of stopping and starting with this because I have to obviously um, make sure my video camera is in the right place. And then in your tray, you've got these two holes here. This is your tray to keep your bits. And then you have these two notches here and here. So you just slot those in there and then open up this. And this one here, you can move backwards and forwards depending on how wide your roll is. Now, I don't actually need a roll to cut this piece of vinyl, but I'm just showing it for demonstration purposes. Obviously, I'd only cut, use a roll if I'd got a much longer design I was cutting. I'm going to be using a piece of gold on a roll this time. Obviously, it cannot be any wider than 12 inches. Well, in fact, it's slightly less than 12 inches because it, it has to go on there. So you roll it on and then you push this just to hold it and then you guide it up here and you've got a little guide mark here and then you just guide it up there. So I need to go here to my arrows on here. This is my SDX machine. I need to press this arrow till I get to roll feed. I press roll feed. I'm going to say start to cut and then click select my pattern and as you can see my pattern is there okay so I can test and I can start so I need to load my vinyl now so I'm going to pop that back down there I'm going to put that back down there again I'm going to make sure that this is actually up to the rollers make sure that this is pushed to the right and I'm going to press the roll feed button and it will start to load my vinyl and then bring it back to where it should it's okay so then i can just press select cut or draw i'm going to cut in this instance obviously it's already on half cut um i'm just going to check that i did put that i did put that on cut yes it's on half cut and half cut five cut speed five so i'm actually going to think that that was actually too high and i'm going to put that down to auto because um, I was cutting something much, much, so much thicker vinyl before, so I didn't actually check that that was on auto, which um, it is. I always think it's best to do with with your SDX machines because that's what they're built for. So then I'm going to press OK and press. I don't need to press a 
test because I'm sure it's going to be fine but if not I would just test there and if you press test it would give you a choice of circles etc to cut um, it's given me a little square down there I'm going to go back because that little square I'm going to move that back up there because I don't want to, it to cut halfway down my vinyl so I'm going to press start and oh and it's actually telling me as well I don't know if you can see that that I need to lift my lever up which is on the side here on the left hand side I need to press my lever up to position two so I've done that I'm going to say okay and I'm going to start and it will just cut that little square out and so it's testing the thickness of the vinyl and it will cut me a little square out And I can see whether or not, it's probably difficult for you to see because it's actually underneath. I should have cut it a bit lower, but if I get my little pokey tool under there, I can see that it's perfectly cut perfectly through there. And it's left the backing on. So it has cut my, so my cutting depth is about right. That was the mistake I made on the other one. I forgot to change that round. Okay, so now I'm fine. I can say start. And it's going to take three minutes. I'll put you on pause again. So it's just got one minute or less than one minute to cut now. It's done the first motive. And as you can see, it's cutting the actual leaves out at the moment. Well, you can't probably see that, but that's what it's doing. I assume it's doing because I can't see it myself either. And then finally, it will put that box around it, which makes it so much easier to actually not waste so any of your vinyl. So it doesn't matter whether it's this tiny, tiny, tiny piece of vinyl you're cutting or a huge, mungus, great big three foot length of vinyl. It's always better to put a, a, a bounding box around it and there it goes and then you can actually um, do it much easier right now on here on this machine you may not have noticed that at the bottom there's this little extra bit that you cut that comes with it and this is a blade for cutting your vinyl so you just pop that you can see that there's pop that, turn that around a little bit Pull it back a bit oops you've got a little knobbly bit there and a knobbly bit there you put that on there and on there and then you just run that along there now this is going to actually cut off more vinyl than i want because my my pattern is so small but i should do it anyway so i'm just going to run that along there and that would have cut my piece of vinyl so i'm going to press finish on the machine it says finish or continue to cut I have finished rolled material moves to trim at new trimmer position okay and oh actually that did, I should have done that first I forgot that it rolled it back I did that a bit previous in actual fact so I could have saved that much vinyl so um, we learn from our mistakes so never mind but I'm not going to cut that bit off because it will give me some extra so that's always very useful and just run it from right to left and then you have your vinyl and then once you've done that you press ok on your machine and it actually ok again and it will take it out the back of your machine and then you can say remove the cut end ok and so that's fed that through to the back i don't know if you can actually you can just about see that on there okay so as i say i didn't need this great big piece of rolled vinyl to do that but it was just to show you how to use the roll feed and also when you finished with it don't forget to take that off that just pull that just pulls up there and don't forget to unlock sorry unlock here and then push that back and then just hold that and turn the black lever backwards so that it doesn't actually come out again so that's in the right position and don't forget to put your 
lever to number two back down again. It doesn't matter if you don't, because it, if it's in the wrong position, it will actually tell you it's in the wrong position. I always just store my things together back in their box, and it's very useful. It just literally fits on top of each other. Just pop it on there like that. Fits nicely on top. And I put it back in the box, because then... Oh, I forgot to put the little cutter on it. Don't forget to put your cutter back on it again as well. And then pop it in your box and it's there for safekeeping. Okay, so I'm going to attempt now to take this other piece out that I got wrong last time and hope that this is cut properly. I uh, like to do, I like to fly by the seat of my pants, so here goes nothing. Oops, see, this is looking so much better. It's coming off perfectly ish. So let's go up there. If it doesn't come immediately, just don't force it. Just do just do it in little baby steps. And if necessary, always cut a piece of it off. So it's not if you have got a larger design, don't it's more difficult. So there you go, you've got that that's come off completely like that. Don't need to keep that bit. Hopefully this will do the same. So use a pokey tool, it's always useful. This is why I say a little bounding box always works wonders because otherwise you're going to have to try and get your pokey tool under these bits and you're going to ruin your design. So this is why I always put a box. And as I say, don't be tempted to go at it like a bull in a china shop, which is usually my way of doing things. So just do it gradually, 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 and then you will all be happy and have a nice there we go that's that bit so then I just need to do the middle bit now so I'm just going to click anywhere in the middle here because so, this bit we're not keeping so it doesn't really matter so oops put my pokey tool under there somewhere there we go and then when you've got something like this word John which has got some very fine bits on it just be very very careful because that is going to be difficult to get that out without lifting it up. So I might go around the outside of that first, around the outside, and then gradually come into the middle of that J, and then, oops, that came off wonderfully. So because I didn't cut it as deep as the last one, that has come off absolutely perfectly. There we go. So there is my design ready to go on the mark. And actual fact that shows up better in the gold as well for camera purposes. So next I shall show you how I adhere it to the mug um, and what I use to do that with. Because I don't like wasting vinyl, because I'm a bit of a cheapskate, well, no, I think we all like to keep our bits and pieces because we work hard for our things. So I've just cut that out and just going to take this little bit of the top off here so that I've just got the design on my piece of paper ready to actually transfer that to my mug. To transfer your, your design onto your mug, you can get specifically specific transfer tape but I don't like that because it's not clear and you can't see through it so what I use is and it's also not that it's quite expensive what I use is a piece of um, roll that you can get in the pound shop or I get it here in action in France and it's basically what you use to cover school books and things with um, so you can use clear one or you can use um, if you've got some stuff for covering books at home, use that. Um, I've got, and once you've used it, it lasts for, for yonks. This is a piece I've used several times. So um, basically all you do is you peel the top part back from here. And I like to place my design on there so that I know it's going to fit. And then you just cover the top of your vac design with that. And it's as simple as that. And because uh, it's a more solid surface, surface than I've got under here. So you just burnish that all down like that underneath this. And as you lift it up, you'll see whether it's lifted it or not, whether it's actually adhered. 
and it looks like it's all going to come off quite nicely onto my transfer sheet yes it is and so now I can then just leave that as it is and you can leave that for a long time you don't have to transfer it immediately um, but you can do it bit by bit um, actually what I should have done which was very silly of me I should have actually cut this down the middle here because this is going on one side of the mug and that's going on the other side of the mug um, but that's not a big deal because I have got so much of this I can just do it this way it's a waste I wouldn't have wasted it like this because I'm as I say I'm a little bit tight but if I just do that then I can do it bit by bit I shall cut that bit off there and cut that bit off there okay still going to use that bit and I can use this afterwards so all I need to do is put quick peel that off don't need the packing sheet that it's on, so I can pop that back on there, on the carrier sheet. Um, right, this is my mug that I'm going to put this onto. And what I need to do first of all is, is to make sure there's absolutely no grease on it. So I've actually used rubbing alcohol in it to make sure that it's absolutely grease free. Um, I'm going to, normally I'll get a cushion or something to put this on. I wonder what I can rest this. I'm going to rest this on this here because you need something to make sure that this is my Scrabble tiles or something like Scrabble tiles. So you need to decide whether I like to know whether the person is right handed or left handed because normally I put if the person is right handed I will put the actual word, name on that side and the other little pattern on that side um, so that they're not actually drinking on it not that it's 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 completely safe and it doesn't won't move off but I prefer to do it that way so I don't know how I'm going to be able to do this left-handed but still um, I'm not left-handed um, to do that I'm looking through a, a camera lens to, to do this so it's actually going to be quite difficult so I need to decide roughly where I want to put that and I think it's going to be maybe a bit more I'm gonna to have to stand up to do this oh that's better if I stand up I can see it better so there's my handle and I want it about about there I know that's the bottom that's the top of the mug and so this is why measuring it was essential okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel this back and peel it back from the bottom in actual fact and I'm going to lay the bottom bit down first sorry I'm going to peel it back from the bottom and I know that it's all adhered to the actual transfer tape so I'm going to peel it back from the bottom see exactly where I want to put it you have got a little bit of leeway when you're doing this because you can lift it up but, but just don't completely rub it down if that's the case so I think that's probably looking okay so I'm just going to lay that down and then I need to get a credit card, which I haven't got at hand, which is typical. Oh, excuse me a minute. So you get an old credit card or something similar. And you just go out over the design to make sure it's adhered before you take the transfer tape off. Because you, you, you don't want to do it a second time. Um, obviously, if you've got a pattern that is actually not like this, this is individual bits, then you might actually need to cut into the transfer if it's on a round sur surface because it's not going to go around evenly but this because this is the way it is and you just need to burnish down even with your even with your hand will do just make sure it's all adhered nicely to that surface before you take the ta transfer tape off and this is why it's also important to make sure that there is no grease on your mug or whatever surface you're putting on onto onto a letterbox or whatever and then you can just pick up a little corner and just gradually see and let's say this is a very slow process this don't rip it off in one go just gradually gradually pull it back and if it's adhered it's adhered if not you just lay it back down again and go over the pieces that haven't adhered but, oops, you see there's actually one leaf there. That leaf isn't laying down flat. So again, just go over it, burnish it. 
and there it is it's laid down nicely and as you see actually I've, I've actually done a very fine design here so it wasn't probably the easiest of designs for anybody to do on 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 a video there's another leaf there that's not completely flat so just go over it again it doesn't matter how many times you go over it again and again this is why I say you need it in two pieces as well um, let's pull it back again slowly 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 catchy monkey as the saying goes I've never known that I've never had to try and catch a monkey fortunately so um, don't see why anybody would want to catch a monkey they're beautiful things and they should be left out in the wild where they belong shouldn't be in captivity but then that's my opinion so there we go and that is my mug so as you can see that's still got a lot of tack on it um, so I'm going to lay that back down on my carrier sheet and I can use that another three or four times if not more okay so there it is my mug looking saying John looking very smart it actually I probably should have put it a bit more that way because I say when I was doing this I was looking through the camera so but it doesn't really matter and then the other bits I've got here I'm going to just cut these into a couple of bits like that because I'm going to put them on this side just as a bit so it's just got a bit of it's a bit jazzed up um, so it's if I, get my thing, if I can get my fingernail under here I hope I'm recording yes I am recording there we go they're all nicely so um, I might put those let me see which I stand up again those maybe like that over there rub them on make sure that they're nicely down always away with a squeegee or anything you've got but say old credit cards um, I should cover QVC it's a very old card it hasn't it hasn't got my number on it so it doesn't matter it's the wrong side so that's good anyway it doesn't matter so there we go and say gradually peel off as I say it doesn't take an awful lot of pushing to get your design down there we go that's done I can go back on its carrier sheet um, make sure it's all nice that's nice and then I'll put the other two maybe over there somewhere so peel those two off whoops turn this round and maybe put those in a different direction again perhaps there doesn't really matter because there's no right nor wrong it's my design so who's going to tell me if it's right wrong or indifferent it's my my choice all I would say about um, when you've put vinyl onto a mug I would say don't use it immediately leave, you leave it a few days before you wash it up or, or use it um, so that it's got time to really get its adhesive stuck into your into your mat and into your mug and, and this bit I just thought I would just show you I've just done that with my thumbs I haven't even done it with a credit card and it's laid down beautifully so pop that there and so there is our completed mug we've got a nice lot of decoration on it and somebody would be very happy to receive that as a gift um, and as I say because this is right up where your lips go this is why I always do it on the opposite side and also the reason I do it on the opposite side is that the per anybody else on the table can see whose mug it is so if if I was over there I could see oh that's John's mug not my mug so a nice plain little cheap black mug has now transformed into something very personal and I think it looks very nice and I hope you enjoyed that and um, give me a like if you do subscribe if you haven't already and thank you for 
taking the time to watch this. I know it's a little bit long. Okay, cheers for now. Bye-bye.